Well, good morning, Cornerstone Church. This is something new. We're glad you're here, even if you are sitting in your pajamas because you were too lazy to go shower this morning. I know you're thinking, ah, I'm not going to see anybody today. So that's all right. It's all online and we're just glad you're with us. So uh, this is this is definitely something new. It may be a little weird at some point if YouTube throws some commercials like in the middle of your sermon. Uh, that's just the life we live now, right? <laughs> um, I think uh, as I've talked to people throughout uh, the last couple weeks, I, I've kind of noticed two, two different categories of people. Some people are kind of in the middle, um, but I've, I've noticed two different categories. You have those that are basically panicked and fearful. And then you have the other category, which is annoyed and frustrated. And I think this is one of these things where um, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the frustration part. Last week, we talked about uh, the fearful part. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. But before we get into that, would you guys pray with me? Father God, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to do church over the internet. Uh, it's definitely kind of a new strange thing. But Lord, we're, we're excited to be here. We're excited that that we get to worship you uh, no matter where we're at. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would help us right now as we go through trying times with our country, uh, with, with really the whole world, Lord. We pray that you would intervene, that you would guide hearts and minds to you more than anything. Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom as we walk through uh, these very interesting times. And Lord, um, we just pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. So let's talk about the fear side. Now, we did talk about fear all last week. So if you want to hear more on this, really the bulk of it, go listen to last week's sermon. It's up online. You can go to the audio page. It's all there. Um, but I, I think a lot of people are rightly afraid right now. There's, there's definitely um, new things going on in our country. Uh, I've, I've never seen businesses being shut down for more than a day or so. Um, it's, it's a new experience for a lot of us. And anytime you have new experiences, there's some stress, there's some uneasiness. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty coming about in the weeks and months. A lot of us simply don't know where things are going to go. Um, there's fear of lost wages, fear of simply getting sick, um, fear of suddenly becoming a televangelist. Like, when did my life turn into this? Uh, that's a little weird for me. Um, on the other hand, I could just say I'm now a YouTuber or I'm an influencer. But um, let's face it, I'm not a 20 year old blonde talking about my latest skin moisturizer that someone sent me so that I could, uh, you know, put up a review on it. Um, I don't really want to be on camera. Uh, let's face it. It's bad enough that you guys have to look at me. Now I'm going to have to see myself as well. This isn't something I, I was anticipating. And then to top it all off, someone sent me a text message saying, just so you know, you should keep the camera back away from your face because your teeth don't look so great. <laughs> now, now, before you start feeling judgmental toward, uh, toward this text, most of you are probably sitting there eating your Pop-Tart judgmentally thinking, mm, kind of makes a good point. All right, so, here we are in the middle of a pandemic and I'm being cyber bullied, cyber bullied. But that's the world we live in now, right? So there's all sorts of fears, all sorts of things going on. How do we live? Um, I think for most part, for the most part with uh, those of us at Cornerstone that I've talked with, um, talking to other Christians, I don't think so much of us are in the fear category. Um, I, I don't see too many people 
that are that are afraid right now. Um, I think that tends to be a typical response for a lot of Christians. Uh, a lot of Christians, we realize, hey, my life's in God's hands. He's going to take care of me and, and I can trust him. And so that tends to be a response I see a lot. And I, th- I think that's a, a reasonable response. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, even still, let me leave you with this verse. This is a great verse. Isaiah 41.10, do not fear. For I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. You have a God that loves you. He's going to carry you through this. So, for most Christians, though, it's not so much on the fear side. I see it more on the annoyance and frustration side. Frustration, frustration, frustration. It's so frustrating to have people around you do strange things when they're panicked and afraid. Now, that being said, I am not the person you want in an emergency situation. The second something goes down, my brain flies out of my head, and I'm the panicker, can't think of what to do. So, Definitely, um, I understand how people feel uh, and, and how it's hard to sometimes process life when you're panicked and afraid. But it's frustrating for a lot of people seeing others um, doing things that are just out of the norm, whether it's hoarding toilet paper um, or, you know, you go to the store and you can't find some sanitizing um, gels or whatever it is. Um, Maybe you're just frustrated because you're having to work from home now. Or on the other side, you're frustrated because your company won't let you work from home. Um, A lot of parents I know are frustrated because their kids are home from school and they're working from home and the kids are home from school and there's this sort of a clash of spaces as people are trying to get things done. Maybe it's simply being inconvenienced by stores being closed when you thought they were going to be open. Uh, I I definitely find myself in that frustration category, even about the stores thing. I went to Food for Less the other night, uh, just before midnight, because, you know, I heard, hey, it's advisable to go do your shopping during off hours when there aren't as many people. So I thought, I'm already night owl, not a problem. I'm going to go to Food for Less. I'm pretty sure it's open 24 hours. But I get there, and it's closed. <sighs> All right, so I get back in the car, drive home. Next day, I got to go back, do my shopping. It's a little annoying. Uh, then all the other things. We're live streaming now. Well, not quite yet. 12-year-olds, 12-year-old children can figure out how to live stream their video games, Fortnite and Call of Duty and all these things, and they're making money doing it. And I can't figure it out. And it's frustrating. So this is, this is where a lot of us were at. It, it's, it's different. And, and it's a little annoying. It's a little frustrating. But that frustration can sometimes very quickly lead into anger. And this, this is where God really throws some warnings our way. So listen to this from Ecclesiastes 7, 9. He says, don't let your spirit rush to be angry. For anger abides in the heart of fools. Now there's some irony for you. A lot of us looking around feeling like, ah, these people are acting like fools, blah, 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 feeling all high and mighty. But the reality is anger abides in the hearts of fools. We need to really check our hearts when we start feeling frustration, especially when it's frustration for, toward others. Being frustrated with trying to get some hardware, software to work on your computer, I and mean, that's bad enough, but we need to really check ourselves when we're feeling frustration with others. So Proverbs 14, 29 through 31 says this, a patient person shows great understanding, but a quick tempered one promotes foolishness. Similar, very similar thing. Patient person shows great understanding. And it's important for us to gain some insight just as to what is really going on in frustrating times. 
So again, Proverbs 19.11 says this, a person's insight gives him patience and his virtue is to overlook an offense. So what is this insight that we really need right now? This, This insight that allows us to have patience, this insight that allows us to overlook offenses, whether that's an offense that you had in a grocery store, if someone took your item when you thought it was yours and you had your hand on, I don't know, whatever weird things are going on that we feel ourselves taking offense over. What is the insight that we really need? So I think that this insight can really be summed up uh, Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. It's realizing that we have a calling upon our life, that there is something bigger than my grocery store, than just things going on in the world around me. There's something bigger. So listen to what Paul says in Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. It says, Therefore I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to live worthy of the calling you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Paul's basically writing here saying, my life is not my own. This life is not mine to live the way I see fit. Uh, which is a really, really tough concept for us to grasp. I mean, he even goes so far, or what what would he say here? He calls himself the prisoner in the Lord. I'm a a prisoner. Now, whether physically he was a prisoner at the time, that's one thing. But but he's saying, like, I, I belong to the Lord. Everything in my life is focused on his kingdom. It's all about the kingdom of God. And so when we're trying to get some insight that's leading to patience, leading to us being able to overlook an offense. It's realizing that God has called us to be about kingdom work, about God's work. He's called us to reach those that are already in fear, that are in darkness, with the good news that Jesus has conquered death. That through Jesus, we receive peace with God and forgiveness for our offenses against him. How do we overlook an offense? It's because we realize that God has overlooked our offense through Jesus. And it's through Jesus that we have the promise of eternal life. That even once this life passes on, we have something greater in store for us. Think of it this way, uh, as, you're, as you're trying to say, okay, I, I need to be about kingdom work. What, oh, what's that look like? Um, think of a soldier, a soldier training for war. When war happens, they're the ones that go and deal with the struggle and the distress. They go do what we can't do. Um, I'm pretty sure you don't want me on SEAL Team 6. Yeah, I'm not the guy. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cause problems, right? Uh, you want someone that has trained for this, that's prepared for it, that has the insight of what's really going on on the battlefield. Look at uh, a doctor. Right now, our medical professionals... Man, God bless them. Please be praying for our medical professionals. Oh my goodness. What they're dealing with right now, they don't, eh, I'm going to take a vacation. I'm taking time off. They're in the thick of it. This is what they have trained for. This is their calling. And so they step up and they do what the rest of us can't do. So, For us as followers of the living God, the God of all creation, recognizing that he has called us to his work. That's that's a huge insight into life that we have been prepared specifically for crisis. 
that we, that we are the ones to show selflessness and sacrifice when others might be hoarding or thinking of themselves, that, that we are to give compassion to offensive people when no compassion is really deserved. Um, to, have, to have hope, even if others are looking around thinking there's no hope. And I don't think we're at that point yet where people are that freaked out. But even then, it's easy for people to start feeling like there's no hope. Well, we have hope. This is what's so cool. <laughs> we know where hope is found. Hope. In Jesus, we have hope both for this life and the next. We have hope that goes beyond the grave. If God can save us from even the pit of hell and our punishment, if God can save us from that in Jesus, he surely can save us from the things that trouble us in this life. He can save us from fears and frustrations. Right here, right now. Listen to Romans 8.32. Uh, it says, He did not, speaking of God, He did not even spare His own Son, but offered Him up for us all. How will He not also with Him grant us everything? He said, I, I've already given you the greatest thing ever. Why do you feel I'm suddenly going to hold out on you? Now, we know that doesn't mean that suddenly we're not going to have struggles and problems. I mean, you can clearly look around and see struggles and problems. We, we know this. That's not the issue. But in the midst of those struggles and problems, we have hope. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 10 through 11 says this, The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. And then catch this, to him be dominion forever. Amen. To him be dominion. It's all his. He can do with it as he pleases. And so there is hope, even in struggle. And we have the opportunity to show that hope to a world that is fearful and frustrated. Um, we have the opportunity to show that our hope is not ultimately in government and medicines and humanity, but our true hope is in Jesus, the creator and sustainer of all. It's all his domain. So when we're fearful, when we're frustrated, we need to get a bigger insight into the reality of life. Let me leave you with this verse. Colossians 3, 1 through 2. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. If you don't currently know Jesus as your personal and savior uh, and have him as your hope for this life and the next, uh, it's as easy as ABC. A, I admit, God, I've fallen short of what you've called for my life. I've offended you. Um, I admit that. A, I admit. But B, I believe, God, that you, that you love me, that you sent your son Jesus to die for me, that he rose from the dead, conquering death. And I believe that you can forgive me of all my sins. And so C, I commit my life to you. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I want hope now. I want hope for the future. It's ABC. I admit, I believe, and I commit. I encourage you. Make Jesus the center of your hope, the center of your life. Pick 
a bigger insight into the world and what's going around. Uh, and if, if you're a member of Cornerstone, if you're already a Christian and, and you've been feeling frustrated, um, I encourage you, take that bigger insight, realizing that of course, of course people are afraid, of course people are fearful and frustrated, but you have the opportunity to show them the hope in Christ. Would you guys pray with me? Father God, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity to do church online and to do something new and interesting. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you, that you would just bring your peace to everybody that is fearful right now of the future, that's uncertain of where things are gonna go. Lord, I pray that you would bring hope into hearts for those that are just frustrated and, and annoyed with the way things are going in life right now. Lord, I, I pray that you would calm their hearts, that you would help them to see that you've called us to something bigger and that we have the opportunity to show your hope to the world. Lord, I pray that as we get this bigger insight, you would build patience into us, that you would help us to, uh, to um, let go of those offenses. And Lord, uh, I pray more than anything uh, that you would speak into people's hearts, that they would recognize that you are the true hope of this world, both for today and tomorrow. Thank you for everything, Lord. We pray for our, our leaders, for our government, for our local government, for especially all the medical uh, professionals that are working so hard, especially the ones that are uh, just tired. Lord, we pray that you would carry them through this and we trust you that you're gonna make everything right in its time. Thank you so much today for this opportunity, Lord. And we pray in your name, Jesus, amen. Well. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Hey, check out the video right underneath this one if you're on the Cornerstone uh, website right now. And Kevin's got a little uh, closer with some uh, church news, information about giving. And more than anything, we're just glad you guys are here. We love the Lord and we want you to know that he loves you too. So thank you very much. You guys have a great day.